Hello guys and girls, welcome back to the Racing Line for a brand new video here on the channel for something different once again, just like the Yas Marina video, but this time something a little bit more local. As some of you that follow the channel may know, right outside is the Dubai Autodrome, which is a little wet in that clip, but inside the Autodrome is this nice little cafe, or caf, whatever you want to call it, where you can see all sorts of cars, hence the name Cars Cafe. Uh, there's Rolls Royces, Ferraris, McLarens, GTRs, there's all sorts pulling up to this place, and of course, normal cars as well. Um, and whatever these two things are that you see on your screen, Jan Janarelli's, number two and three out of 30, uh, apparently. But today I'm here to talk about one thing and one thing only. That is the McMurtry Spearling, the one of one fan assisted aerodynamic electric powered marvel that some of you may recognize from its record setting speed run at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. With a time of 39, 39.08 seconds, nearly 39 flat, it definitely started to turn heads and proved yet again that electric power is capable of so much. And as after the Volkswagen um, IDR, that beat the McLaren MP4 time, which was set, the MP4 time was set in 1999, uh, and the VW IDR beat it by nearly two seconds uh, in 2019. 2022 came around, and with this fan concept car, smashed it by a further 0.8 seconds. The VW was 39.9, I think, and this was a 39.0. So what makes this British made machine so special? Other than the raw speed. Well, as you can see, the aero itself is a work of art. The way the body curves round and directs the flow of the air is nothing short of F1 engineer worthy. It's nimble size with a length of less than 3.5 meters and a width of 1.7 meters creates a car that weighs less than a thousand kilograms. It's less than a ton despite its carbon fiber body. And with this lightness, not only comes speed and handling, but range, with the battery boasting a 300 plus mile range in its current state. Obviously not in track form, but in road form, 300 plus mile range. The horseshoe-like battery, which creates an even weight distribution distribution on the bottom um, would also be interchangeable with future longer lasting life batteries I'm sure so that's not really an issue anyway compared to today's bulky F1 cars in 2023 that are approaching six meters in length and two meters wide I think they are F1 cars are still under 800 kilos uh, but compare that to 10 years ago when they were 620 those things have put on a lot of weight speaking of F1 remember this thing no no not the Chaparral 2J. Yeah, this. The Brabham BT46, the B variant that raced in the 1978 Swedish GP. Brit John Watson and Nicky Lauda qualified this car in P2 and 3, with the latter going on to win that Grand Prix. The fan was introduced as a means of sucking air from under the car and increasing the downforce, and it was Brabham's response to the Lotus ground effect cars, uh, which Andretti at that race had put on pole position, still by a 0.7 second gap. Think about complaining about today's F1 races with a gap like that on pole position. It's pretty similar, and that was in the 70s. Well... As I mentioned, I kept saying that the McMurtry is fan assisted and that is right. It has adapted this technology from this F1 car for modern day use and has a fan under the car creating a whopping two tons of downforce from standstill. This increases to 2,250 kilograms at 150 miles an hour. Um, and it's just a, a mean hybrid of the torque of the, that we see in electric powertrains for straight line acceleration and um, and mixed with the downforce and aero to provide insane cornering speed. But it can pull up to 3G, or more than 3G in corners. It goes 0 to 60 in 1.4 seconds, 0 to 100 in 2.6 seconds, and 0 to 150 in less than five seconds. You may have seen it dominate this Ferrari, even with a head start at the Dubai Autodrome in a straight line. XF1 driver Max Chilton was on hand for a quick chat about this car and has been heavily involved with the development and said that he had to adjust his driving style just to get used to the downforce. But what baffled him the most was how insane this car is in the wet. He said it's like it's not even raining. The downforce produced makes the track feel no different. Um, I did mention the Nordschleife to him because surely that's a record that these guys are going to want uh, in this one of one car. They're going to want to try and beat the record there, surely. Um, he said he wants to, but they have no plans as of yet, but he does want to give it a go. It will be interesting to see how this car handles the bumps and the nature of that circuit. It would lose out on the straight, but through the turns, it would have uh, an almighty advantage, I'm sure. What's mental about all of this and this car is that it's road legal. It's got number plates on it. 
tax in the UK would be zero pounds because it's electric. There's two models available, or there will be two models available. There's a road version and a track version. I wish I could remember the prices that they told me. This was a little while ago, and I wanted to do this video for a while. I think it was around 800k to 1 million pounds for the road version. And then it was something like 1.6 to 2.5 million. I know that's a big range, but it was <laughs> way up there for the, the track version. Um, and we should see the first version of this car on the roads probably around 2026 i think they said um so keep an eye out for that don't know where that will be but i know that knight international are the sole traders of the mcmurtry spieling here in dubai so anyone here uh, that wants to buy it will go and see them but this single seater hypercar should be on any any motoring enthusiast list um so if any of you got a couple of spare million they can lend me so that i can drive this thing i'll do a track guide i'll do a track guide on it no Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, something a little bit different. If I don't see you on track this week, I'll see you next week for the next video here on The Racing Line. Peace.